And okay, so <clears throat> I'd like to welcome Rob Favion from Age of Central Texas to Caregiving Cafe on Zoom. And um, he will tell us about the wonderful programs and services that Age um, offers. He has posted some of his contact information and the striking a balance 2021. Um, flyer on the side, so please take advantage, and I encourage you very much to attend that great resource. It's their 20th anniversary. Woo! So um, take it away, Rob, and thank you again for being here, and thank you, everybody um, else, for being here. Uh, I know everybody's very busy. Welcome, Rob. Thank you so much, Lynn and Dura, for inviting me to come back and be a part of this group again. I really appreciate it. My name is Rob Fabian, and I'm the Director of Marketing and Communications for Age of Central Texas. We are a regional nonprofit organization. We were founded right here in the Central Texas area. We're celebrating our 35th anniversary this year of providing services to the community. And our mission is to help both older adults and family caregivers to thrive. And we do that through direct programs that provide resources, education, support to help older adults, particularly those who have a cognitive issue, to be able to stay connected in the community and continue with their purpose in life. At the same time, our founders were very forward thinking 35 years ago to know that in order to help older adults, we also needed to support the family and the family caregivers. So we have a lot of resources, education, and programs helping support the families who are helping care for their loved ones. I'm going to, in just a moment, go over some of the programs that we have available. But first, I wanted to share some information with you about what's going on in Central Texas with both older adults and with caregivers. So age is in the process of our biggest expansion we've ever had in our uh, existence. We are getting ready to build a brand new center in the South Austin area. We have purchased land down in South Park Meadows and we are going to be building a brand new center that will have all of our programs there. Um, our current home is in a uh, historic building built 1906 over in the central Austin area, over in the Hyde Park area, which even up to five years ago was a great location. But I think we all know that traffic is just heinous and uh, it's impossible to get anywhere. So as more people are being forced out of, the, out of Austin proper, a lot of the folks that we are serving are no longer anywhere around us. So even though we don't want to go chasing need, we do realize that it's difficult for a lot of folks to get to our programs and to our services. And so step one is we're building a brand new center in South Austin. Step two, we will build a brand new center up in uh, the north area in uh, Round Rock to serve all of that area. And at the same time, we'll renovate our historic home. The goal being that we will have three main hubs across Central Texas where it should be easier for anyone to get to our services. So before we launched into the fundraising end of it, we did a, a study of the general public because we wanted to find out what does the general public really know about aging and what are the real issues that people are going through? Uh, and in particular, uh, older adults and caregivers. So these are some of the results from that study. And two major things that we learned. Um, some of the things are surprising, some are not. But two things that were kind of surprising to us. Number one is that 70% of the residents here in Central Texas, that's Travis Williamson, Hayes, and Bastrop counties, 70% do not know that we are the second fastest growing area in the nation for older adults age 65 plus and the fastest growing in the nation for that pre-retirement of 55 to 64 year olds. You put those two things together and that means for the next 40 years, there are gonna be more older adults in Central Texas than any other demographic. In fact, right now there are more older adults than children in Central Texas. There are more people over the age of 80 in Central Texas than there are children ages four and under. So 
we always think of Austin being a young city. The reality is it's an aging city. The other thing that really surprised us is that more than half of the people in Central Texas don't know a single organization that serves older adults or caregivers in our community. Even though we are ripe with support in this area, most folks could not name a single organization that could provide help and services. So that was a little bit of a surprise to us. And we'll talk a little bit more about both of these things in just a moment. We asked about what are your key concerns about aging here in Central Texas? Three out of four, obviously, said housing. You know, it's just too expensive to live here, especially if you're an older adult. And don't we all know that's true? Um, I bought a house out in Maynard uh, about five years ago. First time I've ever owned a house. I bought it for just under 190,000. Uh, refinanced recently. And so the bank had it reappraised. It now appraises at $265,000. Five years. Just for giggles, I went to Zillow.com to see what they said. They will buy it from me right now for $325,000. So on one hand, that was a good investment. On the second hand, though, with skyrocketing values, if I sold my house, where could I find anything else that I could buy? And that's an issue that a lot of older adults are having. They may have paid off their mortgage, but my um, taxes keep going up. You know, my tax value on my house went up $10,000 in one year. And Austin has one of the highest tax rate values in the nation. So if you're on social security and a fixed income, what do you do when your taxes keep going up at that rate every single year? So that's one of the big issues that we're having here in Central Texas. Um, and on the same side of that coin, people are worried about running out of money as they age. The uh, Austin Business Journal a couple of years ago had a story that said, if you retired in Austin with $1 million in cash, how long would that last you? If you, you know, lived not, not extravagantly, um, how long would it last? The answer, 11 years. So if you retire at 65 with a million dollars in cash, and by the way, who has a million dollars in cash when they retire? If you just lived off of that, by the time you are 76, you're out of money. And the reality is that most people are living well into their 90s and even past 100 easily. So running out of money is a big concern for a lot of people here in Central Texas. Other concerns is not having family members nearby. We have a lot of solo agers here in Central Texas, people who are, don't have uh, family, but they're living by themselves as they age. Um, transportation issues are a big concern, especially for people who are living rurally. And that's where a lot of our older adults are being forced into. Um, out in Maynard, where I live, our population has gone up 400% in the past five years. And it's because it's one of the only places that people can find housing that doesn't cost half a million dollars. Um, Flu Pflugerville is exploding. Taylor and out in East Williamson County, have, their population has gone up substantially. Hutto is the fastest growing area in the nation for seniors in poverty because it's one of the only places that they can find housing they can afford. The problem is there are absolutely zero resources out there. Um, access to hospitals, another issue if you're living, being forced out of the Austin area proper, you know, how do you, if you don't drive, how do you get to your doctor? How do you get to healthcare? How do you get to the grocery store? Um, so all of those types of things are concerns. And again, nothing really surprising here, but it's things that we're just not thinking about all the time when it comes to older adults and family caregivers. When we asked what is your biggest worry personally, physical and mental decline, top the list along with running out of money and having those issues, uh, being a burden to their family as well as they age, if they develop dementia or have physical issues. 
when we asked, are you a caregiver? 11% of the population says, yes, I am now. 31% says, I know that I will be very soon. That actually is right around the national average. About 40% of the population is caregiving for somebody. What surprised us a little bit though, is that the general population admits to being caregivers. Most people who are caregiving don't consider themselves to be caregivers. Unless I've got mom living in my house 24 seven and I have to quit my job and all I do is take care of mom, I'm really not a caregiver. Well, yeah, you are. A um, little bit about me. Um, I help take care of my husband who has early onset dementia and my two parents who live independently in Round Rock. Dad had a brain bleed stroke two years ago, which has affected both his cognitive and his balance. So he tends to fall quite a bit. And mother had a pretty good fall about uh, three weeks ago while trying to take care of him. So, you know, do my parents live with me? No. Am I caregiving for them? Yeah, most definitely. You know, I go every once a week. Uh, we, I'm taking off work now every Friday, and that's where we're scheduling all the doctor's appointments. And uh, we go to eat. I go help them. You know, I don't want them mowing the yard. So take care of that. Those type of things. They can still take care of themselves for the most part, but I'm still helping take care of them. Um, for the 42% who said, oh, no, I'm never going to be a caregiver. Surprise. You know, uh, Rosalind Carter, who started the Carter Caregiving Institute in Georgia, has a very famous saying that there are four kinds of people in the world, people who are caregivers, people who were caregivers, people who will be caregivers, and the person being cared for. And you know, the real reality is all of us at different points in our life are caregivers. If we have children, we take care of them, we're caregiving. If our spouse or our partner gets sick, you know, we take care of them. For those of us who are in this journey now as caregiving for our families, you know, we move in and out of the caregiving realm throughout our entire life. And the death problem, not really a problem, but the you know, as we've talked about today, no one really teaches you how to do this. Uh, when I was a child, we lived on a ranch in Leander, and next door to the ranch was the grandparents, and on the other side of us were our great -grand my great grandparents, and then all around us were the aunts and uncles and cousins, all kind of in the same area. So if Aunt Irene fell and broke her hip, we were all right there. You know, someone could go stay with her. She'd come stay with us, take food over, all of that. We had that whole big nuclear family. That doesn't really exist anymore. I learned by watching my family take care of each other. But for the most part, we don't have those experiences anymore in our lives. And so when we end up drawing the short straw and something happens in family and we have to suddenly become the caregiver, we don't know what to do. We don't know where to look for the resources. We don't know who does what and they can help me. And so that's why our organization and others like us exist is because you get thrown into this many times and have no earthly idea what to do. When we ask caregivers about their concerns for themselves and the person they care for, about 70% are concerned about the physical decline of the person they're caring for. That's a legitimate worry, not only because as they continue to decline and their health gets worse, that's going to bring on new issues with caregiving. Um, but also, you know, what if, in my example, if I've got to take care of mom and it gets to the point where she can't bathe herself, that's going to be really embarrassing for her and for me if I have to start bathing her. What do I do? Um, worry about the mental decline and cognitive issues with our older loved one. Um, I know there's going to come a point where my parents probably will not know who I am. So, you know, I think all of us who are dementia caregivers understand that, that that is a really sad turning point in our journey. 
So, you know, how do we prepare for things like that? Loss of independence of the person that we're caring for, you know, that just becomes more of my worry now that of things that I have to do to take care of my loved one. What are your worries as a caregiver for yourself? Obviously the stress and depression that comes from caregiving, it's a hard job to do. There's no way around that. Making good choices. People are concerned that, you know, they won't make the right decision when they're caring for their loved one. And by the way, as we always tell caregivers, there is no right or wrong answer. There is the answer you made with the information that you had at the time. And that is the right answer. You don't go back two years later and go, oh, I wish I could have. No, you didn't have that information. You didn't have that choice at the time. You made the right decision. None of us are going to make bad decisions on purpose for the person we're caring for. So, you know, never beat yourself up over anything like that. Um, caring about our personal health. You know, that's always a big one with caregivers. We tend to not take care of ourselves as well. We sacrifice going to the doctor for ourselves. Um, and, you know, another thing that we always tell caregivers, you have to take care of yourself first. That's not being selfish. That's being realistic. You put your oxygen mask on first because if something happens to you, who's going to take care of the person you're caring for? The current statistic is that 40% of caregivers die before the person they're caring for because of the stress involved in the process if they don't get help. When the caregiver becomes 70 years or older, the percentage jumps to 80% of them, if they are not getting any assistance, will pass away before the person they're caring for. Think about all of these little ladies who are caring for their husbands out on their ranches out in Williamson County who are trying to do it by themselves. What happens when they pass away and the husband has dementia and there's no other family around? So it's imperative that you keep coming to Caregiver Cafe. You know, just the opportunity to say, here's what's going on in my world today is huge because you're getting it off your chest. You're getting it out of your head. You're getting to have another person sit there and nod and go, yeah, I, I hear you. I've got the same thing going on with me. So, you know, that's, that's important. So I applaud each of you being here today because just by being on this Zoom call, you're helping take care of yourself. So hooray. And of course, people worry about them running out of money themselves. You know, as, as we noted, it's expensive to help take care of your loved one. You know, memory care in Austin right now is running between seven and $8,000 a month and it's private pay. You know, Medicare doesn't pay for any of this. Medicaid will pay for skilled nursing, but that's it, and it's only on a limited time. It used to be when someone went into long-term care that it was approximately 18 months from admission to when the person passed away. That's because we kept our families at home much longer. And when it got to a point where we just physically could not do it because it wasn't safe for them to be in the house or we just didn't have the skills to do it, then we would move into long-term care. And it was toward the very end of the life. Well, number one, we're living a whole lot longer and medicine is advanced so that it's not just a move in and then we kind of park ourselves and wait to die. Currently, the new statistic is a person is in long-term care, which is assisted living, memory care, uh, skilled nursing, seven years. Seven years in memory care time, $7,000 to $8,000 a month. Who has that money? So the longer that we can stay at home safely, the better, because it's better for the person that's being cared for and it's better on our pocketbooks. I mean, let's be realistic. So that's a, that is a concern for a lot of caregivers. I'm going to go, I'm going to blow through all of my money, taking care of mom and dad. And then when it's my turn, when I need it, I have no more money. So here we are with that. Are you awareness of area of 
programs. I mentioned I remember at the beginning. So we asked caregivers, is there anything in your neighborhood, town, city that helps take care of older adults? General public. So this is Travis Williamson, Hayes Bastrop, 18 and over. Uh, 2,000 responses that were of all ages and all demographics. Most people said, oh, sure, there's something here. We went, okay, name one. 90% said, okay, you got me, I can't. Don't know. Of those who could, the primaries were AARP, Meals on Wheels. Okay, makes sense. They you know, have multi-million dollar marketing budgets. We see them on TV all the time. There's billboards on I-35. Okay, that makes sense. Churches, sure. Churches always traditionally have been places of care and support for the community. Um, Age of Central Texas came up, which was great. But for the most part, people couldn't name anything that was helping in the community, which was a concern for us because after 35 years, we're like, hey, we've been here, we're serving, why don't you know we exist? But not knowing any of the other resources in the community, like the Area Agency on Aging, um, Family Elder Care, who've been around longer than Age of Central Texas, Alzheimer's Association didn't come up. So, we kind of dug a little bit deeper and just from empirical research, you know, not based on any facts, we believe that it's twofold. Number one is that for most people, if you're not caregiving or you're not in this world looking for the resources, it's really not top of mind. You know, I could not probably name an organization that, uh, helps people with leukemia outside of leukemia association because i've heard the name before but i wouldn't know where to go find them in austin because i don't have anybody in my world that has leukemia same if i'm not taking care of an older loved one i'm probably not looking for those resources so it's not really top of mind for me and then number two you have to realize that st the new statistic is 187 people move to austin every day that's new people who've come here from somewhere else who don't know anything about any of the resources here. If 40% of those folks are caregivers, that's several thousand people every month who move here who don't even know the first place to start looking. So the onus on us as organizations is to keep reminding folks, hey, we're here. When you need us, we'll be waiting for you and ready to serve you. The other thing we asked about was ageism. And this has been kind of a torch that age has been carrying now for a while. It's our concern about the way older adults are portrayed. And 88% of the general public says, yes, ageism is a big issue here in Central Texas. And the reason is because our workplaces don't honor our older adults and the knowledge and skills that they have. And the way that media portrays older adults is generally negative. And so that continues with the stereotype of the elderly person, you know, the doddering, dumb, comic foil of the older person. And so that is one thing that we have been working toward, especially with our local media, to get them to change the conversation around aging. You know, those who are 65 and older, not only are the largest population on the face of the earth, it is also the most diverse population that has ever existed on the face of the earth. And those who are 65 and older are going to be the dominant population for the next 40 years globally, not just here in Central Texas. So we need to change the way that we consider aging because when you reach 65, you're just starting act three. You've got another good 30, 40 years ahead of you. So it's not the I'm retiring and sitting on the porch in my rocker. It's, yay, I've got more time now to do all the other stuff I want to do. So, you know, growing older has changed significantly here in not only Central Texas, but across the world. So Age of Central Texas, as I mentioned, 
offers a lot of programs and resources to help both older adults and family caregivers. One of our cornerstones is our Thrive Social and Wellness Centers. These are the only licensed adult day health centers in Central Texas. We have one that's here in our Central Austin location and another one that is up in Round Rock. And they are designed for older adults who can't stay at home by themselves during the day. So let's say mom is living with me, mom has dementia. I have to go to work. I can't leave mom at home by herself. We know that home health care is incredible incredibly expensive if I had to have someone come sit with mom every single day. So what do I do? Well, mom can come to the Thrive Centers. They're designed like a social club. So for our members, they're not our clients, they're our members. They get to go someplace where Monday through Friday, they're going to be with other older adults, having an awesome fun day full of activities. We provide breakfast and lunch and snacks. We have a full-time activity director at both locations where every day is a full day of amazing activities. But for the caregiver, they know that mom dad, husband, wife is going to be somewhere safe, secure, and I don't have to worry about them. I can go and do what I need to do. Go to work, go to HEB, get my hair done, go sit in the park and feed the ducks, whatever I need to do. For the caregiver also, being a licensed facility, we're licensed with the state, so that tells them we've got oversight looking over our shoulders. We have a full-time nurse at both locations, that provides medical oversight because some of our folks have high blood pressure, some of our folks have to, um, we've got two folks right now that are on feeding tubes. Um, some of our folks are high performing, some are very low performing. So we can serve all across the spectrum there. As a nonprofit organization, we are designed to give away services to the community. That's how nonprofits work. We raise money, we use that money to provide services. The exception is our day centers because they are very expensive to run. They are more than half of our annual budget because so much resource goes to them. So we do charge to attend the day centers. Our current open rate is $70 a day, which is actually about half of what the real cost is for providing the service. But we are licensed with Medicaid and we are licensed with veterans benefits, both of which will pay for the person to come. So if your family member has Medicaid or ha is a veteran or spouse, it's covered. Long-term care insurance also pays for it because it is considered long-term care. And honestly, if a family member needs to be in the center, we don't qualify Otherwise, money is an issue. That's why God invented donors. We have sliding scale for folks that need to be here. In reality, about 85% of the folks attending our centers are not paying a penny to be there. They are really fantastic opportunities. And if you have this, have a need that we can fulfill with the centers, I highly recommend them. They, our members, just love being there. Our staff are amazing. And for our caregivers, it is such a weight and burden off of them to not have to worry about where mom, dad, husband, wife are going to be during the day. We also have a health equipment lending program. If you ever are in need of any durable medical equipment, a walker, a wheelchair, shower bench, crutches, canes, any of those things, we loan them for free, no questions asked. We have no requirement on age, residency, finances, nothing. It's just if we've got it and you need it, you can have it. We loan out about 2,000 pieces of equipment every year. We take donations of gently used equipment. So if you've got stuff piling up in the garage you want to get rid of, we will take it and we'll clean it, repair it, and loan it back out to folks who need it. We also partner with the Austin Diaper Bank, and so we can provide an uh, incontinence products for free as well. Everything from pull-ups to gloves, wipes, bed pads, all of those items. So that's another great service that we have available to the community. Caregiver U is our education program. And 
it is a really fantastic opportunity and I highly, highly recommend it for everyone who is caregiving. We started this about eight years ago with a grant from the St. David's Foundation to provide free evidence-based education programs in the community. What we do is we partner with other organizations around the four county region, such as churches, YMCAs, um, fire departments, um, and train their volunteers or staff in this nationally renowned curriculum. They become class leaders, they're certified, and then they go back to their geographic area in Central Texas and offer these classes to the public for free as the class teachers. We provide the backup with all the materials and resources for it. When COVID started, we of course had to stop doing all those in-person programs and we pivoted to online. And our staff created three brand new online programs that we are going to continue offering. So we've got three main areas for these classes. For We have a basic caregiving class. The in-person is called Powerful Tools for Caregivers. It was created at a university a number of years ago. So it's been test driven for a long time. It's a really well-known program. It, it consists of six classes um, that cover all the ins and outs of caregiving, but also particularly how to take care of yourself as a caregiver. The online version of that is a two hour divided up, one hour, one day, one hour, next day, uh, called Empowering You to Be an Effective Caregiver. We have a dementia track. There's a program called Savvy Caregiver that is a, a dementia class. It's again, six classes designed specifically for the care giver whose family member has dementia, because that's a whole other animal when it comes to caregiving. We have a short version of that for online that's called empowering you to be a, a strategic and effective caregiver. And then we have false prevention. Um, Matter of balance is the in-person class. Um, and that one is amazingly effective. Again, an evidence-based one. And then we created an online version called Empowering You to Prevent Falls. That's a two hour class. We're gonna continue doing the online ones uh, at least once a month with each of them. And the, uh, we have started back with the in-person ones with our partner agencies. Uh, of course, with us going out to stage four and with Wilco again being in uh, their red stage, we may have to pull back from that again. But at the very least, we do have those online classes that are available. We also have a resource and information center where we offer one-on-one -on -one assistance to anybody, both older adults and family caregivers, to help you connect the dots to everything that's here in the community, whether it's our program or someone else's program, whatever it is, we will help you find what it is you need. Um, it is free, it is personalized, it's individual. Um, currently we're doing it by phone and Zoom um, and hopefully be able to be able to open our offices again very soon where you can come in personally, but our social workers are extremely knowledgeable of everything that's in the area. So it's a free service. Please use it. Use it often. Use it many times if you need to. That's why, that's why we are here. And I always say when I'm doing these presentations, never, ever, ever be embarrassed or afraid to ask for help because every one of us at one point in our life needs help. And there's no shame in saying, I need help. And that's why we're here is for that very reason. So never ever feel embarrassed about asking for help because that's why we come to work every day. We also do a number of seminar, seminars and conferences every year. I put into the chat about our upcoming 20th anniversary Striking a Balance Caregiver Conference. It is the longest running and largest caregiver conference in Central Texas. We partner with the Area Agency on Aging to host this every year. We're gonna do a hybrid this year in August 17 through 19. We're gonna do six online uh, webinar uh, conference sessions with experts from all over the nation um, that's going to be about caregiving issues. Our theme this year is kind of the past, present, and future of caregiving. So we're going to look at, we're going to have a caregiver panel. 
of caregivers talking about what have I learned in my journey. We've got uh, the vice president from AARP for caregiving. He's going to talk about what is caregiving going to look like post COVID. Um, we're going to just have fantastic sessions. All of them are absolutely 100% free. And then on Saturday the 21st, we're going to get together for a celebratory luncheon over at the Norris Conference Center, because we as caregivers really need to be in the room together and be able to talk to another person face to face. My Lord, we've been missing that so much. We're hoping COVID doesn't shut us down again. But that is our plan as of today. We are still going to be in person. And our keynote speaker is going to be Chet Gardner from TV's Day Tripper. He's going to be giving our keynote. He also is caregiving for one of his family members as well. So it's going to be really fun. Plus, we're going to have a very awesome uh, information and resource fair. So all of this is absolutely free. I put the flyer and the registration uh, URL in the chat. So go register. It's going to be a wonderful opportunity. The next month in September, we have our Williamson County Caregiver Conference. We're still planning it to be in person at the Wingate Hotel on Saturday the 25th. Uh, all of this is on our website. So uh, if you miss any of it, just go to our website. And you can find it all there. Uh, it will be a half day with a uh, wonderful sessions, resource fair. We're going to feed you breakfast, lunch, uh, absolutely free. And um, then throughout the year, we have other resource, uh, conferences, and we also do one-off weekend, two-hour webinars throughout the year uh, on all different top topics pertaining to caregiving. Uh, for example, coming up in uh, October or November, I can't remember which date, we're going to do Medicare and Medicaid because it'll be right before open enrollment. Everything changes every year. So we bring someone in from the state uh, to talk about what's gonna change, what's not gonna change. Because for a lot of us caregivers, we're the ones who are having to do mom and dad's Medicare and Medicaid. Then finally, we have a new program, actually it's an old program that just kind of got repackaged due to COVID. We had a program called Memory Connections that met at five different locations all around Central Texas designed for older adults who are in the early stages of their cognitive loss. And it was a really fantastic opportunity where the members could get together at whatever location was closest to them and would have a half day of great activities and would have bring their lunches, have lunch together. But because everyone who attended had a doctor's diagnosis of cognitive loss, it was a very safe place to talk about that openly and share, be in a room where everybody else was on the same level playing field with you. So that was a really effective, wonderful program, the only one of its kind in the US. When COVID hit, we had to pivot. So we went online and started doing it just like we are today. That turned out to be pretty successful. And in fact, it was wonderful because people from other parts of Texas and the US were able now to be a part of this. So we kind of adapted it and it's going to be now an online program, but not just for folks in early loss, it's going to be for folks with any type of cognitive loss. And we're gonna do it where we're going to have it at different times during the day. So when you meet for your intake, we will talk about where you are in your journey and figure out which one of the three groups during the day, high, middle, or low performing, might be the best for you. And that way we can deliver these services and the programs and resources at the level that is most effective for you. Simultaneously, we're going to be providing services and resources for the care partner. So we're going to kind of case manage you for a little while. And it's a really amazing program. We've been test driving it through the summer at this new level and it has gone very well. So this is something that we are gonna be rolling out in the next few weeks, very broad publicly as kind of a new program where we took something that we have been doing for a while that is really fantastic and utilizing our new technology abilities 
to be able to reach more people because sometimes it's hard to get to, you know, the in-persons. But we know that the in-person is still really important. So one of the things we're going to start rolling out in the fall is a like the Caregiver Cafe, we're going to have in-person monthly get-togethers. And it's going to be more of a little social thing for folks. Come, you know, let's get together with a, you and your care partner and let's go do something fun together. So um, like we were talking earlier before the presentation, are there anything out there that I can take mom to go do? It's coming. We're, we're getting ready to launch it. So we'll, as soon as we have it all set up, and of course, you know, COVID is what's God is worried about when can we launch it. As soon as we've got all that, I'll make sure that Lynn has all the information. So that in a nutshell is Age of Central Texas and what we do. So does anybody have any questions for me? I want to, um, not so much a question, but a, a comment is that thank you and seriously call the, um, the new name resources and information center yeah. um, for anything that you need, even if you're not sure of what you need, call them and they can figure out, you know, tell them the situation. And then um, is it Natalie that it would be mm -hmm. handling this? She's amazing. Um, and she can help you figure out what it is that you're really looking to find. It is very common among family caregivers to not even know what to ask. Yeah, you know, a, a, lo a lot of caregivers, you know, they don't know if they're knocking on the right door. They don't even know if they're the right neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're, we're all in this boat together. You know, most of us that work here either have been or currently are caregiving ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we understand the, I'm just so stressed out and I don't know what to do. Okay, let's start there and let's dive down a little bit and let's figure out what it is specifically that's, that's got you stressed and how do we find that solution. Rob, what counties do you cover? Does age? Right. So we cover Travis, Williamson, Hayes, and Bastrop is where our primary areas of service. The reason for that is that the St. David's Foundation is one of our big financial supporters. And those are the counties that they cover. So just for ease of grant reporting every year, we cover the same. However, we are probably going to be expanding and we're already doing stuff down in uh, Lockhart. And we know that there's a big desert of service up in Bell County in the Temple area, uh, same out toward Burnett and Marble Falls. So we will never ever tell somebody I can't serve you. You know, we get people who call us from Lubbock saying, I know you're not here, but Lord, I need some help. So, you know, we'll help you find the help. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we, we're we never gonna tell somebody we can't serve you. It's just our resources with what we have and the amount of money we have every year to spend, we are kind of locked right now of delivering into those four counties. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. And um, um, there was a question about um, the South Park Meadows um, mm -hmm. Wellness Center. Um, any expected date of delivery or? Uh... So that's a great question. Mm -hmm. So, you know, COVID slowed down our fundraising. Mm -hmm. um, we, we bought the property with the intent that by the end of this year, we would have started construction. Uh, you know, end of this year's coming, we don't, we're not gonna be able to start the construction. Our guess is that we're probably gonna start turning dirt about third or fourth quarter of next year. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, construction costs are astronomical. Mm -hmm. If we were to try to start turning the dirt right now, uh, it would be more than double the budget of what we have to do the construction. Mm -hmm. The industry is saying that once Tesla and Amazon's construction are done, things should balance out a little bit more because right now they're pulling all the resources and all the uh, labor because they can pay more for it and don't care. Mm -hmm. And so that's why everything is so expensive right now on construction, but it should start leveling back out about the time we're ready 
to begin. So we're still about that far from having all the money we need to break ground. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But our projections and uh, from the, the people who were giving us money, we're projecting that it should be, we should be able to break ground toward the end of next year. You know, with COVID, a lot of the big support funders pivoted from where they were giving their money to emergency services. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just to keep everybody healthy and alive. And so we took this bucket of money that we were going to give you, and we're going to give it over here for something else understandable. But now that things hopefully are starting to come back to a new normal and a little more even keel, we're seeing that the funding is starting to level back out where it was before. And so we can expect, you know, we're, we're getting those verbals of, yes, we're going to still give you the money to name the this wing for us, but it will probably be first, second quarter next year for you get to check. Yeah. So that's where we are right now. Yeah, yeah, and, and life is kind of in suspended animation yep. mode right now. So, and we get it, but you know, so in the meantime, um, I wanted to just mention again the, the, I think it, you call it when you're stuck at home or things to do if you're stuck at home, it's part of your website. Uh, yes. For everybody to go. Yeah, and I'll show you that real quick. I'll yeah. show you that real quick too. And I just noticed in the chat, uh, Ina was asking about whether we're going to have the uh, social wellness center. Yes, we are going to have a center licensed for 75. It will be a brand new, amazing center. So the two centers we have now, you know, we had to make them fit the property we have. We're building from scratch. So we get to use everything we have learned the research that we've done at other big centers around the U.S. to create a state-of-the-art, oh my gosh, it's going to be amazing space that is not only provides incredible services, but we've also looked at things like, you know, how does someone with dementia utilize the space around them? And how can we build the best center that makes it easy for them to navigate. So there are going to be no corners in the new center. It's everything will be rounded so that you can walk all the way around and keep going around if you want. You don't end up in a corner that we're going to have eight bathrooms for this center. So you're never far from a bathroom. Um, that there is no door you can't go out of or go into. You know, we never want to tell someone, no, you want to go over there? Sure. Go for it. You want to go outside? Go for it. we got this gorgeous enclosed garden with a little walking trail in it. You know, so all these wonderful things that we've learned. So as we build our new centers, we'll use all of that experience. But yeah, let me show you real fast on my screen. Let me find my. Okay. I'm going to jump over here. All right. You see, uh, this is the age web page. Right up here at the top, activities to share at home. We created this during COVID because we knew that so many caregivers and just everybody's, I'm stuck at home. What do I do? So we started going searching through the web to go find stuff. And we have got link upon link upon link upon link of things to do and videos to watch and go take trips to museums online and virtual tours and go on safari and just ton, hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of stuff. Now, I will be honest, I have not gone back and updated this in three months or so. So there might be some dead links here. I don't know because some of this stuff was created very early in COVID. And so some of it may not still be active, and especially some of the local links that were created. But there is a ton of stuff here. Uh, webcams from all over the world. You know, you wanna go watch what people are doing in Vegas on the strip? You know, there's a webcam for that. Wanna watch penguins at the zoo? There's webcams for that. Just tons and tons and tons of stuff here. And so we do go in and add more things as we go, but they're coloring pages and games and 
just a plethora that no matter what you like to do, there is stuff there to find. Yeah, and so, I think, so thank so, you. Because want to share that. So important, even for the caregivers as well, you know, oh, yeah. um, I, I love the museum, and but I'm here, you know, so yeah. uh, it's amazing. And then there, just to mention very briefly, discovered, and this was around Christmas time, you can walk and see the Christmas lights in New York City and different cities. And then of course, Christmas back then, but they have walking tours of cities all over the world. Mm -hmm. I'm like, wow, that is yeah. so cool. So it's okay if I'm just stuck here, you know, I, I can go anywhere. Yeah, if you like performing arts, there are a lot of shows that are available free, uh, operas and musicals and plays. So there's, there's just a plethora of things to do. So I would, I would definitely try it out in a mighty good time .com, mm -hmm. um, and uh, Senior Planet, which I just discovered a couple of weeks ago. Also excellent, excellent activities, um, but you've done a great job. I really wanted to point that out, Rob. Thank you for creating that um, because, you know, COVID happened to everybody <laughs> and we just have to figure out how to keep going. Yeah, so that's very helpful. So thank you again. You're welcome. And in the chat at the beginning, I also put our contact information for Ages Central mm -hmm. Texas with our website, our email, um, the info at agentcentraltx.org actually comes to me. So if you want to reach me directly, you can just email right there. Mm -hmm. And then the, the registration for the Striking a Balance Conference, I highly recommend it, even if you just pop in for one of the sessions. It's just yeah. fantastic information. And I will attest to that. They've, I've been to several and uh, they've been fabulous. And um, I can't wait till we're all meeting in person again because uh, we were really pampered with delicious food um, and wonderful coffee and great company because they had these big tables with about eight or 10 caregivers and, and it was wonderful. So uh, not that I like to talk a lot, you know me, but it was like so cool to be with all these family caregivers it was beautiful and all the resources so wow. um, i want to thank you for that and for your support and for your wonderful talk um i'll just see if anybody else has any other comments questions but seriously they love um being overworked at age of central texas so call them for whatever you need yeah, you know, Rob, it's been years since I've actually been been there and um, learned about what all y'all do, and there's so much more now. Thank you, because I, I mean, I have this many pages of notes on what you talked about today, <laughs> because I'm constantly helping people that, you know, they don't necessarily need hospice, but they need help, and yeah. and to know of all the different resources there, I, I, I knew a little, but I didn't know as much as, as you filled us in on today. So thank you so very much for everything you do. Yes, and thank you. We really appreciate you going with a flow and moving on to virtual because that's the life that we're in right now. And in caregiving, we need to learn to adapt. Yep. So don't fight it, that's what it is. So let's go with the flow, let's roll with it. And I'm so excited about your upcoming projects as well. So thank you very, very much for being here. And as always, you know, for everything you do and I'll see you at Striking a Balance. I hope everybody signs up for it because it's a great, great conference. Well, it's my pleasure. And thank you so much for the opportunity to get a visit with you guys again reach out to us at any time that you need anything. Um, we're more than happy to assist in any way. If you just want someone to talk to because take care of mom is making you nuts and you just need to get it off your chest, call. That's why we're here. We're, okay. we're in the same world, so we understand. Yes. I'm going to have to pop off because I've got another event in 10 minutes and I got to get myself ready for that. I but contact us anytime you need anything. And I hope you all have a fantastic weekend. Okay, you too. Thank you again. Bye-bye. Okay, now uh, we can stop recording with Jura's magic button.